and you had mentioned uh, the caravan was getting a lot of attention yeah. before the election. Um, just in terms of, you know, not even specifically this caravan, but do you consider illegal immigration um, you know, a threat to national security? And again, what do we do? We've been talking about it a long time. What do we do to actually fix it? Well, I think both political parties have used immigration as a lever uh, in elections. Uh, we've been talking about this since I was Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, and that's almost 15 years ago. I think there are answers. I think there's a comprehensive solution. And until both parties sit down and say, all right, one, we have a right to keep to defend our borders, and nobody has a right to cross the borders, got that. Uh, what do we do to uh, deal with those who are here illegally but haven't committed a crime. They're far different from the uh, gang leaders, the drug dealers. That's where I think we ought to be directing our resources. Uh, how do we legitimize their presence? Because we're not sending 10 million people back. But how do we create a system for people to go back and forth across the border? We use a lot of immigrant labor in Pennsylvania for our number one industry, agriculture. And I will tell you this, those folks don't want to be American citizens, but they don't mind working in America for six, seven, eight, nine months get a nest egg and go back, back and forth. So they need a comprehensive solution. They've got to quit the polarization of this issue, quit using it as a political lever. It's a problem that could be solved by well-intended people on both sides of the aisle. And frankly, I'm kind of sick of both parties using it as a political lever. And maybe, maybe, here's where I would hope that with the Democrat House and the Republican Senate and the president said he wants a deal, it's not just about walls. It's about a comprehensive approach. Let's solve the problem instead of talking about it. That's my hope. You talked about it a little bit uh, downstairs this morning to see if we could expand on a little bit. Uh, what advice would you give Nancy Pelosi now that House uh, Democrats have taken control of the House again as she deals with President Trump and tries to get some things done? Well, listen, I, I, way back when, I mean, Nancy Pelosi had been there a long time. She was in Congress when I was in Congress. And listen, she's. There are a couple of things you better pay attention to this lady. Uh, she had everybody on a disciplined message. You know, you take a look at most of the campaigns they ran for the House. It wasn't an anti-Trump message. It was what they were for. So she's going to be, I think they're going to, Democrats are going to do that. All I would say to, uh, and Nancy's not going to, Speaker Pelosi, because I do think she's going to be Speaker, she's not going to call me for advice. But I'd say, you have an opportunity. If you don't like the President's tone, this is what I tell her. If you don't like the president's tone, if you don't like the president's tweet, dial down the rhetoric within the Democrat Party, reach across the aisle on a couple of these issues where you can see common ground. Once we can establish some common ground, somebody's got to take the lead, and I'd say, Speaker Pelosi, take the lead, let's see if we get these things done. Immigration, infrastructure reform, prescription drug reform. I think you'd find some willing uh, people over on the Senate side, dial down the rhetoric, get it done.